Hello, I'm Shauna Walhorn with the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGovTV, I'm here to discuss Proposition Q, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 8th. City law prohibits the willful obstruction of public sidewalks. City law authorizes the Department of Public Health to remove public nuisances, which include unsanitary structures. And city law does not specifically prohibit placing tents on public sidewalks. Proposition Q would prohibit placing tents on public sidewalks without a city permit. The city would not be allowed to remove or order removal of an unauthorized tent unless the city had available shelter for all residents of the tent. Under Proposition Q, shelter includes city-operated shelters, navigation centers, and other city-operated housing. Before removing or ordering a person to remove an unauthorized tent on a public sidewalk, the city would be required to offer shelter to all tent residents, offer to pay the cost to transport all tent residents to live with friends or family outside San Francisco, and provide written notice that the city will remove the tent in 24 hours. If residents do not accept the city's offer of housing or shelter, or do not remove the unauthorized tent within 24 hours of the notice, the city may remove the tent. After removing the tent, the city would be required to post a written notice near the area where the tent was located. If you vote yes, you want to prohibit the placement of tents on public sidewalks without a city permit and allow the city to remove unauthorized tents if the city provides 24-hour advance notice, offers shelter for all tent residents, and stores the residents' personal property for up to 90 days. If you vote no, you do not want to make these changes. I'm here with Jim Lazarus, Senior Vice President of the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce and a proponent of Proposition Q. We're also joined by Quentin Mecki, a volunteer for the No on Q campaign and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. You're Thank welcome. You. I'd like to start with some opening remarks and we'll begin with you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, homelessness has reached epidemic proportions. Uh, while the total number of homeless uh, has remained fairly stable over the last 30 years, recently the number of people living on streets and in parks have skyrocketed. One of the worst symptoms is tent encampments that are spreading in our neighborhoods in front of homes and businesses. It's not compassionate to allow our fellow human beings to live in tents on the street. It's dangerous and unhealthy. Prop Q, the Housing Not Tents measure, will make it city policy to move the homeless out of these encampments and into shelter and housing. It requires notice and storage of personal property, and it makes it city policy to find emergency shelter for people living on the street, a policy that was discarded in the late 1980s when Camp Agnos appeared in Civic Center Plaza. Allowing tents to remain in place only prolongs homelessness and doesn't help people get the services they need. The Board of Supervisors won't pass reasonable regulations. It's time for the voters to do it by voting yes on Q. Thank you, Jim. Quentin? Uh, yeah, Proposition Q is a measure that has a long history of previous measures. There was Care Not Cash. There was the anti-panhandling measure. There was the sit-lie measure. It is a misguided attempt um, at playing upon people's natural frustrations with the poverty and homelessness that exists in San Francisco. Um, let's be clear about the title, Housing Not Tents. There's neither any housing within the measure, nor is there funding for any homeless services. Um, more importantly, and I think this is actually the danger of the actual measure, um, Jeff Kaczynski, the head of the uh, city's Department of Homelessness, is not asking or requiring Prop Q to pass before they're actually clearing out encampments. They're doing that right now. But what Prop Q actually does is codify a process that then prevents legal ramifications. Right now, the city is removing encampments as we speak. They're not waiting for Prop Q. Prop Q means if they cannot provide shelter, then they can't remove homeless encampments, and that's the problem. Thank you, Quentin. So my first question is, uh, how is Proposition Q different from laws that are already passed in San Francisco? Well, how will it change things? And I'll start with you, Quentin. Uh, quite simply, uh, from our perspective, uh, both city and state law already cover lodging on sidewalks. Um, and there is ample room for the police to remove them. Earlier this year on Division Street, uh, the city, in coordination with the police department, removed uh, encampments along Division Street. Just two weeks ago, they removed a large encampment along Islaus Creek. Um, so laws already are in place, and the city has every power it needs. Prop Q 
would take a different tact and essentially codify by mandating that the city cannot remove homeless encampments unless shelter is provided. And let's be clear, there are at the last count 6,500 uh, homeless individuals in the city, that's not including youth and families. There are only 1,200 adult shelter beds in the city. So this idea that we can suddenly offer shelter to everybody and they would be off the streets and the homeless encampment problem is going to disappear overnight, it's simply not, which I think is one of the reasons why the Chronicle recommended no on Proposition Q. It's simply not going to change anything. But more importantly, it's going to tie the hands of the city's department on homelessness. The city hired, the mayor hired Jeff Kaczynski, Sam Dodge, a talented team of people to actually really address homelessness. And this is a very cynical measure that is simply not adding value to what's happening in the city when the city's really trying to come together around a very challenging issue uh, and rather play upon people's fears for what we think is simply just political gain. Thank you, Quentin. Same question to you, Jim. A current law doesn't cover every circumstance. You have to have a public health issue or a full blocking of the sidewalk. Our sit lie ordinance that the board wouldn't pass that the voters had to some years ago has a time limit as required by law. So you cannot uh, move somebody at midnight in an encampment uh, that's blocking a sidewalk. Uh, this legislation will uh, give the police department and the city and our social service uh, uh, departments the ability to identify those encampments that need to be relocated, give proper notice, uh, secure locations for personal property, and turn around an, an, a growth in homelessness on the streets. We don't have 6,000 people on the streets every night. We have 6,000 identified homeless in San Francisco, uh, and we have probably 2,000 that need to move into shelter. This will make it city policy approved by the voters telling City Hall, create that shelter, get people off the streets and out of the parks. Thank you. So the second question is, how do we ensure that the services are available, given that right now there are wait lists for shelter beds in San Francisco? And there are empty shelter beds every night in the city. Uh, but there's no doubt that the city has to do more. We've had, we had more shelter beds 30 years ago than we have today on an emergency basis. Where we've been successful is outcome, supportive housing. The city's building hundreds of units of supportive housing right now. The city's building new navigation centers right now. So there will be the means to move people off the streets and out of parks. We have vigilante justice out there. We have homeless killing homeless in Golden Gate Park. We have prostitution in tents. Um, we have stolen property. It's time to really get serious about taking homeless people and, serve, and treat them as human beings and get them off the streets, out of the parks, into programs. And this is just one more step, one more opportunity for the voters to tell the elected official that enough is enough. Uh, we can see meetings in the Mission and South of Market and Northeast uh, where businesses and residents are coping with really difficult circumstances in their homes, in their, in their neighborhoods. And the homeless need to be served, but not in a tent encampment. Thank you. Quentin, same question to you. I'd uh, to be very clear about this. If we wanted and the intent was to treat individuals experiencing homelessness as humans, then we would stop with the stereotypes of prostitution, of rape, of homeless murdering homeless. I can flash back to 14, 15 years ago when then Supervisor Newsom uh, put forth Care Not Cash, and the basis of that campaign was inciting these stereotypes about the poorest people in our city that I think shame on this campaign. Shame on Proposition Q for even saying or implying that that is the reality of the, what's happening on the streets right now. It, there is nothing right now in Proposition Q, as Jim talks about all these well intentions, that is not already happening. We just created a Department of Homelessness. We just hired Jeff Kaczynski. We're trying to put uh, funding into truly addressing homelessness in the city. And yet, we're taking a step backward for apparently, I don't, you know, Supervisor Farrell's own political intentions. Um, it's really unclear how this possibly adds value to this conversation at all. 
at a time when the city's trying to come together, we are once again dividing them with stereotypes that I think are very unjust and unfair to those individuals who are experiencing it. People should be frustrated about what's happening with homelessness in the city. People should be frustrated that there are tent encampments. But let city officials do their job. They are doing it right now. They're certainly not waiting for Proposition Q to pass before they do it. Thank you, Quentin. We're going to move into closing remarks, and we'll start with you, Jim. Thank you. Um, we need Prop Q uh, because, despite what the opponents say, no current law truly addresses tent encampments. The opponents argue that uh, only housing gets people off the street on their right. And every night we have vacant shelter beds, and over the next two years, the city is building 300 new supportive housing units and six new homeless navigation centers. But don't take it from me. Uh, Kathy Black, the executive director of La Casa de las Madres, uh, the city's oldest organization that responds uh, to provide help to those victims of domestic violence, uh, had a chronicle op-ed piece just a few days ago. Um, and I have it here. Uh, rape is rife in tent cities. This isn't some kind of campaign rhetoric. Uh, this, these are not people, by and large, who just uh, lost their home. We have criminal activity on the streets in front of people's homes and in front of businesses. Seven rapes in the first six months of 2016 alone. She says tent cities are not a safe place for anyone, let alone vulnerable women to live. Nobody should have to live in fear, period. Prop Q will make our city safer. Kathy Black. So we uh, urge the voters of San Francisco to support Proposition Q. Thank you, Jim. Quentin, closing remarks. Uh, yes, I think that you know, Proposition Q is just more um, of the status quo that unfortunately our city has engaged in over the years of rather than truly trying to address uh, homelessness and poverty, we criminalize it, we stereotype it, um, and do so for unfortunately political purposes. I think that we have an opportunity by rejecting Proposition Q to send a message, a different message than what Jim wants to send to City Hall, that we can do better as a city and we need to. We should be housing people. We should not have people living in, in tent encampments. But the way of doing that is letting the city do their job at a time when they are investing in good staff, they are investing in funding supportive housing. Uh, we don't have enough shelter to meet the demands of Proposition Q. And the city is already committed to the fact that they want to remove those tent encampments. I think it's an opportunity for the city to see through what I think is a very cynical measure um, and hopefully address homelessness in an honest and authentic way rather than a political way. Thank you, Quentin. And thank you both for your comments and your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 8th.